Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to this Ocean Life podcast. I'm your host, Josh Peterson. As always, thank you so much for being here and supporting the podcast and listening and tuning in and for all the great support. Uh, today, we got another really fun one here. We speak with Tony Rapaccioli uh, from Noosa, Queensland, Australia. And so today we talk about longboarding and surf photography, a bunch of really cool things that Tony's involved with out there in the beautiful waters around Noosa. So today then, Tony shares his stories on learning to surf at Noosa, one of the most famous longboard surf communities in the world. We hear Tony's perspective on the surfers and waves that make up this really special place. We hear of Tony's positive approach to surfing, enjoying both the ocean and people around him in the water. We hear about rediscovering Tony's love for photography through shooting the surfers and surf scenes at Noosa, and Tony's approach to sharing photos with the community. We also hear of a great perspective on introducing children to the ocean, the animals living in and around Noosa, and Zenheiser.com, a great music business that Tony has built. So a lot of great perspective from a guy born in Britain, moved to Noosa, learned to surf sort of midway through life, and is out there crushing it and loving life in the water uh, with this community and those around him, his family, etc. So thanks for sharing Tony's Ocean Life with us and being here. We'd love to get um, your feedback, your comments on your podcast app, a nice three, four, five star rating if you feel that's worthy would be killer. But even more important than all of that would be to get rid of the straws, reduce the plastic. Let's all work together on that. And that's not easy, but I've started to notice even my own behavior is changing and not using the straws, not using the plastic lids and Geez, what if we all did that? Who knows how much less plastic would be floating around. So, middle of the summer. Hope everybody's getting out having some fun. Depends what hemisphere you're in. But as always, thanks for being here. Hope you enjoy this one. So now, let's get into the ocean life of Tony Rapaccioli. So, Tony, you know, as I mentioned, you know, I, I saw you, your Instagram and Facebook, and just, you know, a couple of things struck me. One is... Uh, a lot of the just really nice shots that you're taking of other surfers down in your home, you know, your, your neck of the woods there in Noosa and Queensland. Um, but then also some, I saw a bunch of shots of you yourself surfing and, you know, a lot of nice style, goofy foot, you know, really nice style. So, <laughs> so let's start with, uh, the surfing part, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. T- yeah, what sure. are you doing today? What boards are you riding? Where are you at? Just give, give us a lay of the land, man, what you're doing surfing right now. Uh, yeah. So the, well, I started surfing, um, oh, it must have been about six years ago now, uh, coming close to maybe seven. Um, we, we, yeah, we lived in Perth before we moved to, to Noosa. I'm a, I'm a London boy, so um, I've never really surfed before. Okay? Moved to, to Perth. Um, we had a surfing lesson, me and the wife, and it was onshore slop. Uh, it was horrible. I felt seasick after about half an hour. And, and <laughs> oh, I no. Felt, yeah, I thought that's it. I'm done. This surfing thing's just not. For, it's not for me. I really, really don't agree with it. But then we we moved to Noosa, and we've got a, a daughter. She was oh, she must have been about a year, year and a half old. And we're walking through the national park here. The national park's beautiful. It's all surrounded by points. There's literally one point after the other. And I, you know, I've never really seen people on longboards surfing a kind of you know the traditional style. And, um, you know, it was glassy, it was clean, waist high, people catching these lovely waves and nose riding. And, and something just tweaked. It just, that point where you go, oh, you know, I think I can actually really enjoy that. It's yeah. very different to how it was with that surfing lesson in Perth. So I went down to the Noosa Woods here, and there's a place that rents boards, and I rented a, a nine foot foamy and, and took it out. And w- within a couple of paddles, I caught my first wave. And that was pretty much it. I was sold. Hook, line, and sinker. I was, yeah. I was, I was connected to the ocean. I was in it. And as far as I was concerned, I'm gonna surf. Yeah. And that turned into a probably, oh, maybe four or five days a week of just practicing down at the grind, just going straight to the beach. Nothing yep. exciting, but uh, but just loving every minute of it. And I think that's one of the beauties of surfing is when you're learning as well. There's no, um, there's no issues. There's no stress. You're just enjoying it just for the moment. Yeah. And um, it just grew and grew on me. I started meeting other people. Um, and then one day, a friend of mine said, let's go to Tea Tree. And I don't know if you know much about the points here, but Tea Tree is a beautiful little point break. It's tucked in the National Park. Can't right. see any houses. You can't see any man-made structures. Your, your cell phone doesn't work there. So you do, you're completely disconnected from, from 
everyone and you're literally connected to the ocean. I've gone out there, must be about three, four foot, <clears throat> pretty solid, nice and clean. And I didn't know what I was doing. All I'd been learning was to go straight from the beach. So I rocked up there with my friend and I couldn't get my head around why there was only one person on the wave at a time. And no one explained to me, you know, surf etiquette or surf rules. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I thought, sorry, I'm going on one of these waves. Dropped in on this poor guy. I nearly killed him. <laughs> I got wiped out. He got wiped out. We both got wrapped up with each other and, and I got screened at in front of the, the lineup and I thought, nah, I think I need to just go and stay back in the woods. And uh, I did that and stayed and, and learned pretty quickly surf etiquette. And then it was just a progression from there going from there to, to main beach at the first point, getting comfortable with waves there, um, you know, starting to meet the locals and, and understanding how, how surf culture works. Yeah. And then year after year, you know, you get to know more people, you progress, and I moved from there to Little Cove to Nationals, then around to Tea Tree. And pretty much now, I'd say six, seven years later, you know, surfing is really important to me. I absolutely love it. If there's uh, if the swell's right, the wind's blowing in the right direction, I'm out there as much as I can, depending yeah. on work, obviously. But, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm addicted to, to the ocean, and uh, I'm so blessed that I live here in Noosa, especially since we have... Uh, we have all these point breaks around the national park, but if they're not working and the wind's blowing oh, right, yeah. we still have all the open beaches as well. So you can right. go wrap around the other side and catch waves pretty much anywhere. Yeah, and, uh, man. Yeah, so we're, we're pretty stoked living here. I can't think of anywhere better to live. And, uh, yeah, surfing's, surfing's definitely um, embedded itself in me. I don't think it's going anywhere for a long, long time. <laughs> Until the yeah. knees give out, I think. And then That's the, right. The <laughs> yeah, man. But that's, I mean, that's cool. Cause you know, when I, I was looking at, again, this video is on Facebook. That's actually, mm -hmm. oh, it's one of those memory things that popped up from a year ago and you're sliding this wave and, and like just the style yeah. and your, you said, now that you've told me you've only been surfing, not only, but you've been surfing for six years and started kind of middle age. Like, I think you were yeah, already yeah. kind of naturally like you, your body was already tuned to being able to do it. Cause you look like you've been surfing for like 26 years, you know? Oh, thank you. That's, that's a lovely compliment. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know what it is. It's just, ah. Uh... Some people get surfing, some people don't, and 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 I just I got, got it straight away. Not not in, in quality of surfing, just in that surfing mindset. I just absolutely love being out in the ocean, and you know you watch. We're pretty lucky here in Noosa because there's a lot of amazing surfers. I mean, you think <clears throat> from people you yeah. probably know, I'm sure like uh, Harrison Roach, Matt Cudahy, people like that who right. travel around the world and surf really well. But we've also just local people that, that other people might not know. I have like Sam Crookshank, Vince Young, Cody Delaney, Mika Vandermoor, or Jack Lawrence. They're all amazing surfers. And yeah. and I, you know, I was luck, lucky and fortunate enough to, to, you know, to not only surf these waves, but to watch everyone else. And you kind right. of, you watch everyone else and you think, oh, I'd like to surf like that. But I think you just, every single person has their own style. You, you know how you can, you can stand on the beach and just watch someone and know who they are surfing just by their stance or the way they cut back or, you know, yeah. do bottom and all. And, and, and that's pretty much it. I love that everyone, everyone manages to, to create their own finesse uh, out there, whether, whether, you know, you're goofy or regular, the way, you, you know, whether you're, whatever standard you're at as well, whether, you know, you're hanging heels or whether you're just learning how to cross that. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. And, and yeah, yeah I, I've just, yeah, falling for it, hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, man, and that's cool too. That you I mean you're 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 in the middle of a hotbed of of longboarding progression, you know. And 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 look, I, I'm yeah. halfway around the world, and I I haven't seen it. I haven't felt the new vibe. I've talked to some folks, like you mentioned, Tom Wagner, John Brace, and other yeah. guys who know who know longboarding and have grown up for 50 plus years longboarding and they get it and they and when those guys like that say that noose is happening you know it's happening and then seeing yeah. the pictures and stuff but what's it like i mean you're it, we all we all, you know it continues to get improve and just change the way that their style over time but for you to be yeah. out in a normal day and seeing any number of those guys and gals you just mentioned who are just pushing yeah. longboarding you know, um, what's it like to be able to surf with all those types of characters and just that kind of it's, style, like, like yeah, day it's in pretty, day out? It's, it's pretty awesome. We're, we're, we're very lucky. I think I'm, I'm very fortunate because of my job. I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, relaxed in when I can take time off uh, to go and surf. So if I'm lucky, you know, four, four times a week, I might be able to get, uh, just scoot out for 
for an hour and a half, and I only live uh, like a three, four minute drive from from the point. Yeah. So, so that that's very fortunate for me that I can do that. But yeah, I mean, just watching some of these people as well is just phenomenal. And that's, I think, I think what got me back into photography was uh, just the the style and awe of of these people when they're on a wave is phenomenal. And that, Noose is. It's a small town, you know, tucked away an hour and 45 minutes from Brisbane. And it still has that kind of towny feel. It's getting much busier now as most people, you know, realize this place exists. Right. But, um, but the, the, the kind of community, especially the surfing community, you know, everyone knows each other. Everyone's pretty chilled and relaxed and, and we're happy out there. You know, there, there's something about uh, surfing tea tree or granite, which is tucked in the national park and away from everything, where... A lot of people are, uh, are, are connected. You can sit out there, and it's not just about catching the waves. It's also sitting out there and having a chat, having a chin wag, and, and leaving leaving all your stress and everything on the beach, and just yeah. just being out there with the other people. And and that seems to be part of you know most people's feeling of, of the ocean and surfing here. So most people as well seem to to find time in their week or weekend to get out there. So most people you're seeing on a nap. Uh, regular basis whether it's you know two times a week or three or four and you're chatting to them yeah. an hour and hour and a half each day so it, it's a really nice connection between everyone here which is a lovely thing to have oh it's a great the community is if longboarding's cool and one thing that's you know i just dig is you know having grown up surfing for ah oh, geez probably 40 almost 40 years and i'm dating myself oh, wow. but yeah. you know there, there's different there's surfing community as a whole and then there's yep. sort of sub sub communities within that, right? There's the yeah. short board, there's long board, and maybe there's some kind of mixture in between. And, and they're each somewhat different, but especially as I get older, and maybe like you mentioned, the knees and your body, like I, I just <laughs> gravitate more towards long boarding because it just suits my body now. But yeah. it's also just a more a more mellow vibe, you know. And so I get yeah. that what you're saying is being in a beautiful place with beautiful waves, with people who are really enjoying it and using surfing as like a, a meditative approach to just leaving everything else behind and just interacting with nature, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. It's 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 a it's a great great thing, and and you know, um, especially up here in Noosa, in uh, you know Noosa when we first moved here, it wasn't anything to do with surfing. It was just because of the the actual culture of the place, the way it's very relaxed town. You know, it's great restaurants, it's lovely climate here. Um, we're kind of subtropical, so everything's nice and green. We don't really have a winter. So that was the main reason for moving here. But once I realized as well that, you know, this is a surfy town, and I got into yeah. that, you know, yeah. everything just clicked. All the cogs wow. just worked really, yeah. really well. <laughs> That's cool. So to talk yeah. about your quiver today, man. What, what boards are you riding? Well, the thing is, we, we log here. We log a lot. 95% of the time it's longboard waves, and it's pretty much everyone surfs a kind of traditional way here. So... At the moment, yeah. I have two Bing Levitators. Uh, both of those are 9.9. Nine. Um, the one I pretty much ride nearly every day, unless it gets too big, is oh, it's about 24 and a quarter wide. Um, it's two and seven eighths thick. A uh, little bit of concave in the nose and a bit of a tail lift. Yep. It's uh, glass really heavy with, I think it's an 8 and a 10 volant on top and a 10 on the bottom, so it's got a lot of weight on the board as well. Yeah. Um, and that's my go-to, that's my staple. Pretty much anything up to kind of waist to shoulder, um, and, and that board will do anything here. It's absolutely phenomenal. I, I can't praise big boards enough. I think they're the, the most uh, yeah phenomenal boards to surf. They're, they're amazing. If it wasn't for one of my friends moving from San Diego to, to Noosa and bringing his being a, a levitator with him. I wouldn't have even had a clue about them. But uh, Matt, Matt Calvani shapes, you know, fantastic boards. Um, and especially being a goofy footer as well, there just seems to be, I don't know, there seems to be a balance of, of surfing on a wider board, a wider, heavier board. It just suits that style. And yeah. uh, I find that Sam Crookshank, who's, who's a great surfer, he also surfs kind of pretty wide ones. And then there's Tim Crabtree as well. He's another goofy that surfs, you know, kind of big, wide, heavy California-style boards. Yeah. Nature suits style. But um, other than that, I've also got a, what is it, a 6'4 Alaya and a uh -huh. Tom oh, cool. Wagner, yeah, Tom Wagner um, Surfy, which is a traditional kind of belly board uh, made out of wood. 
which uh, oh, Tom, cool. Tom Shanks is, yeah, which is so much fun, especially when it's a bit sloppy. And like I said before, when you're out with the kids as well, you can just muck around in the short break with it. The kids can have a go, you yeah. can have a go. And you feel like you're still getting a few waves even when you're not bringing your uh, log down to the beach with you. Yeah, man. How, yeah, so what is that? That's like, I mean, it's the same dimensions kind of as a billy board or a body board, but it's just yeah, kind wood, of, right? Yeah, they're not, not as wide. Um, it's yeah. pretty thick as well. And, and Tom yeah. just shapes them perfectly. And just, just you can just literally jump off, off, off the sand floor and, and this thing just goes. It's like a little rocket. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I have just as much fun as the kids on that. It's a great, great little board. Uh, right. I know I need more boards in the quiver, and I'm already thinking about uh, something else to speak to Matt about for the bigger days. But you know what it's like with boards. There's always room for another board. Oh, yeah. Even if you don't think you have room, you'll find room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know, man. I know. I just actually right now I have a bunch of wood sitting on the side of my house because I need to build a little surf shack. Like I hit this oh, weird yeah, like – yeah, like this weird critical mass of boards and, you know, boards hanging on the wall, boards yeah. upright in the garage, <laughs> boards out back, boards under the deck. And like, I can't really get rid of any of them. And then, you know, I just, I had to get rid of a couple and now I got to get them out yeah. to make room for other stuff. So I'm building a little shack. But yeah, you always kind of figure out how you can slap another board in your garage, oh, your house absolutely. somewhere. <laughs> so, 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 so what would be your staple? If you had one board, you know, that would get you, not, not, not an all-rounder, but one you would use the most, what's, what's your uh, favorite there? Gee, man, that's such a good question. I think if I had to, I'm really like kind of, renaissancing out these days and kind of going back to my roots that I think I just surf better. And again, with my body and my knees breaking down and just everything else as I, <laughs> from years of yeah. abuse, it's like, you yeah. know, like just a, a nice kind of nine footer, you know, that's something that yeah. I could still ride an overhead surf, but I could also yeah. swing around on a three footer or, you know, and have some fun on just something like that. Yeah. I mean, how about you? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, this 9.9 nine I've got, I just absolutely love. It's this, the, God, is it the third third reiteration that Matt Cavani shaped? So, tradition, uh, I started with a, uh, a stock levitator, and then each time I kind of tweaked it every time he reshaped. And this yeah. one just absolutely perfect. I, uh, I don't think, I don't think I could get a better board. I really don't. And that, yeah, that's the beautiful. board for me, you know. I'm definitely going to pick up a, a, like you said, a nine-footer, something for when the days are bigger here. I yeah. seem to find, especially recently getting into photography, that I, when the days get bigger, I just don't go out. I just take photos. And, and when, you know, it's medium or small or, or, you know, just fun, those are the days that I'm out myself. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I do need something for the bigger days. We've also got a point break here called Granite, which is it's a long walk through the National Park. My board's really heavy. So you oh, might have yeah. got to carry it all the way around and nearly half killing yourself by the time you're getting there. Yeah. Or doing the really, you know, the sharky paddle all the way around where it's a bit spooky, but you kind of get around the corner and then realize how much more you've still got to paddle. Um, yeah. yeah, I need something that's going to fill that void as well. Yeah, man. No, yeah, for sure. For sure. So, <laughs> you know, as we mentioned, and you touched on it too, you know, you, you land in Noosa and, and you, you, yeah. you land there for the culture and it's a mellow place place and you instantly get hooked into the ocean and surfing but also yeah. photography and again yeah. so I mean, you got a lot of shots and uh, of others what's neat about a lot of the shots you take is um I, I really enjoy how you you tag the person in the picture but also the board maker too the shaper which is yeah. cool that's meaningful yeah, you know because um, I, I think the more information the better you know when someone's in the photo you know if they're if they're local or if they live in the area then they might know the shaper as well and that might just get that that person in touch with that shaper and make a magical board for them and then everyone's happy yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's cool, man. Really cool. So, so I mean, talk about that. You know, you, you said that photography mm -hmm. was something that you picked up recently with surfing. And so how yeah. did you get into it? What are you doing with that today? Uh, well, see, I started photography at college many moons ago. And um, I did uh, photography and the history of photography as well. Um, I love the practical side of it. But when I was at college then, it was film cameras, um, learning how to – develop film and to do your own prints and all those things. And I absolutely loved it. I got a, an old Pentax from my grandfather who passed that on to me. And I, I, I fell in love with photography. But over time, I moved and, you know, I got into music and that, that kind of took a, a back seat. 
And it wasn't until, well, probably just under a year ago where um, we just got a new puppy and I've got a nine-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy and I thought it would just be magical to, to get a nice camera and take some pictures and something yeah. to, to document the history of all of them together, the kids, the puppy. And uh, as I was taking more and more photos, the news festival of the surfing was on and I, I took the camera down there and got a few snaps and I suddenly realized I'd forgotten about this, this love of being creative with photography. Mm. And that was it. Again, I said, you know, an 18 to 55 mil lens ended up becoming a 55 to 200 and then that became 100 yeah. to 400. And yeah, the lenses just got bigger and bigger and, and pretty much dedicated to, to surf photography, which is great because it's, it's another connection to surfing, but you're not getting wet. You know, you're on the, you're on the side there. And you, for me, because I know a lot of people in the surf, I know how they surf as well. So you're lucky to have that that chance of knowing, you know, well, this person is good when they're on the nose. This person just looks yeah. absolutely beautiful when they're doing a bottom turn. And, you know, this person just has the most grace when they're cross-stepping. And by knowing the surfers as well, you kind of get those really, really nice shots of people looking comfortable. And I think that's the key when, when I take photographs of people surfing is, as long as they look comfortable and they're happy, that that's a good photo. It doesn't matter how yeah. good they are tricking, you know, whether whether you're you're hanging heels, you know, you're you're doing anything at all that's that's complicated. It, it's all dependent on the surfer. And some people look better on the open beaches. Some people look better on the points. And uh, yeah, it's just it's a lovely way of documenting everyone's style and having something there over time that. You know, the, the the will last the test of time, and and it's nice to be able to also give them photographs of themselves, and you know, it's it's lovely. It's lovely to document all of this. Yeah, it really is, and it's a lot of fun too. I I don't yeah. do it much. I mean, I, I just got like a water camera this uh, about actually in December. You know, so I'll yeah. take shots of the kids, and every now and then swim out and just take shots of people I don't really know. But it is fun to. It gives you a different perspective on surfing when you're looking at it through the eyes of somebody else, you know, you could, you could just be sitting yes. on the cliff watching somebody, but when you're, it feels to me anyway, when you're actually really analyzing, not analyzing them, when you're really looking at them th with the camera, you're really yeah. focused, hyper-focused on that person and what they're doing and, and really just kind of almost sharing that ride with them. It's, it's pretty interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's great that you can, you can take a picture of that wave with that person on it and that's it forever. You know, you've got that, yeah. you've got that, Photograph, you've got that proof and it's a, it's like someone's legacy through through yeah. photography which is yeah it's a lovely thing yeah man so how how often are you going down and, and and shooting from the from the beach well every time i go for a surf i chuck the camera in the car just in case and um if i've got time on my hands i'll try to i'll probably cut my surf back and i'll probably surf less and then and then shoot them with the you know put the board on the car grab the camera and then run back to the beach and take some photos but i don't usually spend too long out there um maybe half an hour to 40 minutes get some pictures and i know who's obviously because i've been in the water i know who's surfing at the time so you're like oh i haven't got pictures of this person before so you know i'll run back to the car grab that i'll focus on them for for five ten minutes on a few waves and try and try and get a really nice photo of them but um yeah, I mean, it's something that oh, I could spend all day doing if I had the time, if I could figure out how to fit it in, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, no, for sure. So do you have like a um, a favorite surfer? You know, I mean, it's probably pretty oh. hard, but is there somebody who, you know, if there was one person you could shoot with, who, who would that be if you got one, yeah. maybe a couple? I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't say one. I'll get absolutely hammered if I did. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's... There, there is good, like I said before, some of those names, like, I don't know if you even know some of these people, but uh, Vince Young, who's, who's amazing. There's Sam Crookshank, who's goofy. I love uh, taking pictures of him. Cody Delaney, who's actually over in, uh, is he in he's either in Oahu or, or in California at the moment. And he's phenomenal. He's probably, a, you know, he's in his early 20s. And uh, he just pulls off things I... I really don't think he's going to make, and you're yeah. thinking, nah, he's going to bail on that, and he does it, and it's just phenomenal, especially for photography. He's he kind of pushes the boundaries, and he defies what 
what laws you think are, are you know laws of gravity laws of anything yeah. wow. he seems to be perched on the nose when you think no one could do it and i love taking pictures of cody he's awesome but um but then there's jack jack lawrence as well he's another young guy who's, who's really shredding here as well um, and then girls like Mika as well. Mika's really graceful when she surfs. Mm. But I'm, I'm lucky. There's probably, you know, good good fifty odd surfers here that I can take pictures uh, of. All day long. Man, yeah, you are for the, yeah, absolutely. You're very fortunate in that sense. Like again, yeah. I'm just scanning. If I just do like a hashtag search of Nusa Nusa longboarding, it's just that it's never ending. The <laughs> amount of just like r just stylish epic shots men and women you know i mean it's, yeah. it's I, you must get lost just sitting there taking photos and time just must go by so fast yeah you got to be careful sometimes you know but the sun usually tells you <laughs> here it's the sun's pretty strong and you get hammered within an hour and hour oh, and a half yeah. so you know you've got to get out of the sun yeah <laughs> so <laughs> what about like is there one or two shots that you've taken that really stand out as like one of your couple of your favorites yeah, there's one I recently took of Cody. Um, that was a tea tree a few weeks before he left. And there was really nice kind of two to three foot clean swell coming through here. There was no wind on it. Um, and he, he, like I said before, he was just perching in positions that I hadn't seen anyone do before. And he photographs really, really well. So there's one, yeah. one of him there. I've, I've got a lot actually to put up on Instagram over the next month or two. But there, there's, there's a few also where... I, I'm trying to kind of catch the the atmosphere of the place, not just the surfer. And right. Hopefully, I have. I'm not sure if I have or not, but I'll put them up anyway. And if people like them, perfect. That's that's great for me. Um, but I wouldn't say there was there was one specific photo of anything that that was my favourite. Yeah. I, you know, I'm only I'm only you know my first year into taking photography again. Now, you know, I'm start, starting in my old years again, but. Um, yeah. Still a long way to learn and a long way to progress, and you know I, I'm sure the next step will be a water housing, and I'll be in the water. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I just love it. It's really, really, really nice. It's a great thing to do, and most surfers seem to be quite creative in their own way. It seems to be some type of calling for surfers to, you know, to have some other type of outlet, whether it's something in music, something in art, you know, uh, you know, wh whether it's culinary and they're a chef or or anything creative it seems to draw people to the ocean so there's a lot of creative people here as well which is which is great especially photographers as well there's Fenna the king she takes amazing photos up here tracy norton who's let me see she she's phenomenal as well so i'm kind of blessed to be surrounded by a lot of people and a lot of different creative outlets that all seem to excel at what they do yeah that's cool man that's inspirational and it kind of fires you up i mean not only yeah. are you are you surfing next to inspirational people who are just ripping and just so stylish? <laughs> and he, you're also taking photos next to people who are, you know, artistic and, you know, as well. But I mean, yeah. I mean, continue, continue on that because as you mentioned, it's like, you know, earlier, like, then there's a big part of what you're up to too is around music, you know? And, and so yeah. this transition over to that, I mean, talk about yeah. what you're doing with, with Zenheiser and, everything and we'll end up talking about kind of re relating that back to just that sense of flow and being in the ocean but tell us what you're up to with your music yeah so I, I started when i was 18 back in london and i started djing first and then that djing got into music production and then from then that got into remixing and from there it then slowly progressed into an online music business and now now it's sennheiser a, a pro, pro audio sample company um, so it's kind of progressive. It's the only thing I know, you know, it's what I've learned since I was 18. Um, and, and it's great, you know, I've been fortunate to, to, you know, be in this business now for, oh, I don't want to say how long, but it's decades and decades. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and, and that's given me a lot of options. It's uh, given me the chance to see the world as well and see different places. Um, and it's given me the chance to move somewhere here and find things that I totally forgot about like photography and and a chance to to get into something like surfing as well which is fantastic but yeah. you know again for me music's my life it's something I've always done and it's something I probably couldn't be without I, I'll keep doing it until I retire and then probably still do it part-time um, yeah but yeah no the Sennheiser is going from strength to strength so I'm happy that's doing its thing um, so basically the the company supplies 
samples and loops and presets to producers and remixes to use in their tracks, uh, depending yeah. on type of genre you know that, that that they actually produce. And yeah, I started that back in two thousand and five. And uh, yeah, so it's been about fourteen years now, and it's still doing well. Uh, That's with, awesome. With, yeah, it's it's great, and it gets me to. I live in a place like Noosa, but I'm still in touch with what's going on in Europe and what's going on in the USA, and and especially yeah. those two. They're predominantly the biggest markets for for dance music. So, yeah, I'm I'm very lucky in that instance as well. Wow, man, that's so cool. And so then, are you day to day? Are you? I mean, you have all the equipment. Are you? creating these samples and you're mixing these these beats and everything and then putting them online for people to to basically pay and download yeah so i started off making the catalog back in 2005 it was it was pretty much a thing that uh, there was only one or two other people doing it online at that time before that everything was on sample cds so i tested the water and it worked and initially for me to progress and, and you know expand the company I, I i was literally creating all the catalog myself but i had a studio back in london so it wasn't too difficult um and then moving over here as the company's progressed i've kind of taken a back seat to the creative side of it and more towards the you know the running of the company so now we have uh, on roster i'll probably say around about 50 producers per year that, that are working on catalog for the site and, and they're cool. spread out everywhere so you know it doesn't matter whether they're in Hawaii, Israel, um, Ibiza yeah. or Australia or Germany there seems to be people popped up everywhere in the world that, that do good at that type of thing and predominantly it seems that those type of musics are, are dedicated to certain types of country like Germany's really good at techno, England's yeah. very good at drum and bass um, uh, Israel's very good at side trance. There's all these different music genres where different countries seem to excel at one type of thing. So you can try and find the producers in those countries that work well with that style. And right. yeah, we release probably a pack a week, and we've done that now for uh, yeah for nearly 14 years. So I think we're we've got a pretty considerable catalogue, and and yeah, it's just ever evolving and ever growing as as these genres and subgenres evolve themselves then we have to keep up to date with what's going on in the world and the club scene and, and trying to keep on on that yeah man that's cool and uh I'm, if you have a, a cool beat in mind i would love to put it on this podcast episode yeah. as the intro music man if you got if you got any laying around you could uh <laughs> i'll find i'll find something it's probably got to be something a little bit more relaxed you wouldn't want something too up tempo for this would you <laughs> hey, no, man. it's, it's got to be a bit hard. <laughs> oh, that'd be rad i'd love to play some of your stuff man yeah, no worries. So then, I mean, relate that back. I mean, what I'm curious about too, I mean, give us yeah. the, the kind of background. You know, you said you're from London. You're in this kind of music yeah. scene. What puts you on the path to a place like Noosa in the first place? Yeah, uh, well, music started for me. I, was, I wasn't I was even thinking about music. One of my friends uh, rocked up with a couple of turntables at his parents' house when I was about 17. And Nice. I played on it and I was hooked. I was like, oh, I've got to get my own set. And then that progressed to sending in a demo tape to a radio station and that progressed to getting a place there and that, you know, it just it just evolved from from there. But um, there isn't really any connection between the music and London and, and moving to Noosa. It just seemed to be a, a slow progression of where life took me. Mm. Um, I met my wife back in... Um, oh, it must have been 2004, I think it was. Um, we were living in London and then decided we wanted to live somewhere else, uh, somewhere obviously by the beach, and uh, the deliberations were a few different places. we just come back from living in Thailand for a while, and it was either going to be Spain, Italy, or Australia. And uh, I, I can't remember why we chose Australia, but we did. And then moving over was pretty easy. It was just packing up and, and moving over this side of the world. Obviously, it's difficult to leave your friends and family behind. Yeah. But, uh, but th that was the move. And we tried Perth first. We stayed there for three years. Felt very isolated in Perth. It's a very different side of Australia. Um, great place, right. but just wasn't right for us. And both of us have been to Noosa decades beforehand, separately, not together. And uh, there, there was something just inkling in the back of the mind to go and have a look and we went over and had a look and four weeks later we'd sold the house when we were moving over to Noosa. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah it's, cool. it's, it's, a, it's a very cool place. 
Yeah, man. And so now, I mean, it sounds like your, your, your roots are planted, you know, uh, you've got the community around you, the surf community, but also you have, you know, your children and stuff. You have a nine-year-old, you mentioned yeah. and a four-year-old. So, so, so talk about that now. I mean, like the importance of what you guys are doing with the ocean and the kids, introducing them, them to the water and everything. Yeah, well, Australia in general is pretty much, you know, you, where you live is pretty much surrounded by water. So the kids learn from a very young age here how to swim and, and you know, kind of water safety. Um, but for us, as I mentioned before, we only live, you know, kind of three, four minutes from the beach. So at weekends, especially spring and summer and autumn, we're, we're down the beach nearly every weekend. They're mucking around in the ocean. Um, I, I tried to, I tried with Daisy to, to, to get her more into surfing, but I think that kind of, I wouldn't say it backfired, but it definitely um, pushed her back a little bit. So with uh-huh. Quinn, I've, I've been very gentle with him. I did want to get him on a wave before he was two, so I took him out on the front of my log at first point and caught a lovely wave with him into the beach, which I was determined to do. But both of them love the ocean. They're both, uh, so Daisy's got a, uh, uh, five four foamy fish, and Quinn mucks around with the belly board I was telling you about, uh, so, uh, shaped by yeah. Tom. Cool. And they've also got a couple of boogie boards, and um, we've also just picked up a Dick Pierce belly board from Cornwall in the UK as well, which um, oh, nice. we're quite, yeah, quite keen to try this summer, which should be fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the kids absolutely love the ocean. That I don't think they realize <coughs> just how lucky they are to be this close in such a beautiful place. But, you know, they'll figure yeah. it out when they're traveling in their teens and 20s and realize how, how fortunate we all are. But, yeah, they, they absolutely love it here. Yeah, man. No, that's cool. I can only imagine, like, growing up there. <laughs> I mean, uh, like you mentioned, like, to them, it's just what they know. And, you yeah. know, because they're kids, we always, every kid takes everything for granted, usually, that they yeah. have. And that one day they'll look back and they'll go, oh, I was pretty lucky to grow up in, in yeah, Mesa with that water and, and so close. Yeah, man. I mean, so then, you know, what, what's cool too is like just the, the environment around you, me being completely ignorant, never having been to That's Australia, fun. which yeah. I hate, even hate to admit having friends <laughs> from there and know people who are there and, you know, being a water guy myself but like dude yeah. i trip out on like the cool stuff that even like the monitor lizards and stuff i mean there's so many neat oh, yeah. <laughs> critters running around where you're at too <laughs> yeah especially when you walk to to granite or tea tree as well you walk through the national park and on the odd occasion you're lucky enough to look up and there'll be a koala in the tree above you um yeah and you get the monitor lizards they're really frequent there through the national park you'll also get some of the snakes you get pythons coming along the park while you're walking yeah. along on the odd occasion and when you're in the ocean as well, you know, there's, there's turtles popping up, you get pods of dolphins coming past you, and, and this time of year is really good for whales as well. So we're pretty much surrounded by nature wherever you are, which is fantastic. Yeah. 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 Do you ever yeah. worry? I've seen pictures that you guys have kind of a small dog. Do you guys ever worry about a python getting your dog? Is that a dumb question? No. <laughs> well, the, the, this dog actually, our, our, our old dog passed away, and that's why we ended up getting the puppy. But previously, with our old dog in our old house, we had everything in the garden. So we had monitor lizards, we had pythons, we had tree snakes, we had red belly blacks, brown snakes, which are extremely poisonous. And, and they were just everywhere. Because we lived really close to the national park there, they would just come come over from, from wherever they were, whether they were looking for water or food or whatever, and just rock through our gardens. Yeah. And it got to the point when we were living there, my office was outside, and I, I just got used to walking over a snake to get into the office. It just became normal, which is very strange for me because I'm a London boy. So yeah. when I first moved here, I freaked out about everything, you know. <laughs> the spiders are huge. The snakes are big or small. Even the small ones are extremely poisonous. You know, there's something to get you everywhere. But, but after a while, it just becomes normal. Then, you know, as long as you keep your distance from everything, they're, they're, they're happy. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool man <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's fun. so then uh so then tony i mean what's kind of what's this year looking like any kind of big plans either with the family or trips or surfing or photography or you know, what's what's next for you man i think it's just a, a a slow progression through everything we just got back from bali which was lovely so we had a nice uh, a nice family holiday there didn't actually surf where we were it was in a surfy area but it was yep. nice just to go go and relax and enjoy time with the family and the kids 
Um, this year, not not the plans to get away for the rest of the year, but definitely more into the photography. I would say I want to try and kick it up a little gear, try and see how much I can get into it. And yeah, as I said, probably the next the next stage would be a water housing, just to get a different view of surfers and try something a bit different as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, that would be it. And it, you know what surfing's like. You never master it. You'll you'll try your whole life. But you'll always keep learning. You're always on a learning curve, and uh, you know, for years and years, you, oh, I couldn't. I've got to learn how to cross step. Oh, I've got to learn how to hang five. Oh, I've got to learn how to hang ten. Yeah. You know, and everything's a step, a step, a step. Right. Um, so yeah, that's probably it for me. Is just just getting out there and enjoying myself. And I think that will be. Yep. I think for us now as well, we're hitting the kind of winter lull where there isn't much swell so everyone's getting a bit desperate so we're going out on a small day so i think everyone's just hanging out for spring to hit in the winds yeah. to swing the right direction and uh that's what we're looking for for most of this year really but i'm blessed you know i'm so lucky i live in an amazing place i've got a great family lovely people to surf with so i, I i'm just happy where i am yeah <laughs> That's awesome. And it's great to yeah. recognize that too. You know, I mean, again, it's like, it's easy to kind of forget that those core, those core things about your life that, um, yeah. you really fall back on that actually really do matter versus the bills and, you know, the other stuff that we, we spend so much time obsessing on. It's like, you got it. It's great to be able to recognize that, man. So good yeah, for you. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. As long as we can get in the ocean and things are okay, then life's good. Yeah, man. hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, cool. Tony, um, dude, this has been fun, man. And thanks for giving uh, thanks, me some, like even more kind of hype on the Noosa area, man. I think, uh, oh, yeah. well, you, you de- now, now you've done one of these, you've definitely got to get out of here. Really? Haven't yeah, you? you have no choice. Oh, no, it looks so killer. And when I do, not if, but when, man, I'll come get a surf with you. <laughs> oh, for sure. Grab one of the other big levitates. We'll get you out there straight away. Yeah, man. Solid too. Yeah. Thank you. Well, so Tony, dude, this has been great. I really appreciate you sharing with us. And uh, look, I'll put some links um, to the zenheiser.com on there so people can check it out. And um, yeah, yeah, just been fun. Fantastic. Thanks, George. Been a lesson, George. Oh, lesson. Legend. It's that time of day, isn't it? I can't even get words out properly. <laughs> <laughs> All good, man. All right, Tony. Hey, thank you so much, man. Thanks, Josh. All right. Cheers. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening uh, to another podcast episode. C- can't do it without you. And uh, so thrilled to have you here supporting uh, myself and the podcast and all the guests uh, continually. Always appreciate a positive um, rating on your, uh, your podcast app, whether it be you know Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, you name it. Just helps, helps gr- grow the podcast and uh, spread awareness. So thanks for that. And then any uh, social media mentions, always super appreciative. And uh, if you know somebody who you think would be great to have on the podcast to share about their ocean life, please hit me up. I'd love to chat with them. Or if you think you'd like to, let me know. Uh, Email is josh at thisoceanlife.tv. All right. Thanks, guys.